Hi, in this episode uh, we are talking a lot about wheels and tires, uh, about the Toyon um, oil um, lubrication system uh, I've built. We are talking about the uh, water cooling system. So um, yeah, all of this coming in this episode. Let's start with the wheels and tires. So this is, uh, I feel like, the most common um, and most frequently asked question. Um, what kind of wheels and tires are you using? So obviously uh, the, the tires are made from uh, Louise RC. I think they are a Chinese-based company, but they are producing very, very nice tires um, for all kind of sizes um, and for all kind of, of uh, usage. And um, obviously, when starting a project like this, uh, I need to calculate the, the scale, the, the, the size, the, the width, everything I need. And in this case, I found um, these, these two tires. Um, normally, these are monster truck tires, um, if you check uh, the, the catalog from Louise. And these are um, B-Rocket tires, so Rocket is the, the tread for, for street use. These are normally for the buyer buggy. Um, I think they are used in the front. And um, I decided to use this for the rear because I like the width. And this is the front, uh, front tire I used. I tried um, to get those tires without those plastic wheels. Problem is they are obviously glued on with uh, yeah, some kind of special, special glue. So you, you cannot get them off. Um, but I didn't want it to run those, uh, those plastic uh, wheels. I had those kind of uh, um, real um, style um, with gold anodized center section in mind. I think they are uh, originally, originally made from, uh, from weld racing. So I tried uh, several ways to get those tires from the, the wheels. And um, in the end uh, I used the oven, uh, oven method. So you heat them up um, in, in uh, degrees Celsius, it's, it was between 170 and 180 degrees uh, Celsius, so really hot. And um, even then the glue is, is still sticking very hard, so you need thick gloves and you need to pull very hard. And you see that there still uh, is some, some um, tire left on the rim. Some parts are very nice, but there are some drawbacks here and there. But um, still, I was able to get them off. And then I started um, for the rear wheels. I started with uh, just using um, uh, billet aluminum and made this two-piece uh, wheel design. And as you can see, I didn't like the soft shoulder. So it's inside and outside, a very soft shoulder. I think it's for, for monster truck bashing use, it's, it's, uh, it's an advantage, but um, yeah, I didn't want it to have it like this, so I wanted a really nice um, aluminum bed, so this is why I extended the, the rims, they are already a little bit dirty from the first test drive, so I made them a two-piece design. Yeah, after the first test drive, I decided to get another pair just for um, bashing, burnouts and whatever because I'm not sure if you can see this uh, the tire, um, yeah, it's really uh, heavy use already yeah, for, for real hardcore driving I decided not to damage uh, this wheel and tire combo because um, the first test drive was without gluing the, the tires on the aluminum rim and uh, the rim spun like crazy, so um, I had to glue them on. And since uh, I don't want to clean those uh, aluminum wheels all the time and change the, the, the tires back and forth, this is the, the set I bought for, for um, burnouts and stuff. I'm pretty confident this thing is, is going to uh, make burnouts like, like crazy with a lot of smoke, noise, whatever. But um, yeah, I don't want to do this with uh, the nice set of wheels. So again, maybe a little bit closer. So this is how I came up with. 
and you, you noticed um, that I'm using a different uh, mounting method so that meant I had to build special adapters uh, for, the, for the rear axle and um, yeah, initially I, my plan was to, to um, install um, disc brakes in the rear as well so I do have them in the front so this is a hydraulic, um, hydraulic disc brake setup normally used in the, in the bar also and my plan was to, to install them on the back but after um, making first tests with the brushless motor um, it was obvious that I can use the hydraulic disc brake setup for the front and have an completely independent um, brake setup for the rear axle so the rear axle is, is, um, is breakable with a brushless motor fully um, programmable and the front is um, is um, break uh, break with this um, main main um, what it's called brake cylinder whatever and um, yeah this is the uh, servo going to um, um, break here with a long push rod. My plan was to make custom front wheels made from from a billet piece um, also, but um, those those um, Baya uh, tires they have a very large inside diameter here. So that means only this aluminum piece I would have uh, I would have bought I needed sorry <laughs> was ich gebraucht habe um, in this in this big uh, diameter was was like 55 euros a piece so only the raw material and then I stumbled across um, this manufacturer it's from DDM Racing. Um, it's not sponsored by the way, but I like uh, what, what they are selling here. So it's uh, like Dave, davesmotors.com and they are selling these, these buyer wheels. So um, I'm not sure if this was a rare, uh, a rare wheel, um, I need to check, but um, you get like four different styles. And um, yeah, and this set was like 130 euros, so like 20, 20 uh, euros more than only the material I, uh, I needed for the rim. So uh, I did not question this at all. I don't like, um, the wheels are great, so nothing uh, against DDM racing. Um, obviously I wanted uh, to have my style in the front also, but uh, this is a compromise uh, now I, I just uh, took. It's, it's, uh, they are very nice, they are much nicer than plastic wheels and um, initially uh, in the last videos you, you all uh, saw these um, bedlock rings on there because I wasn't sure if I wanted to have such a huge aluminum uh, diameter and now the plan is, um, so I changed the, the bedlock rings and they, they are expensive at least, so if, if you uh, count like, I think it was like 65 euros per rim and uh, a bed lock like a rim like this uh, ring is like 30 euros so it, this thing is quite um, quite expensive if you compare this to the wheel itself so I wasn't sure at the beginning but later on um, I ordered them and now I think I just need to um, put them in the, in the lathe and um, run it against some, some um, sanding paper to get a more like satin, satin finish like the front and what I'm going to do um, obviously this is red, this is orange um, this center piece will be glass blasted and I'm going to, um, I'm going to um, use this, uh, this gold um, ceramic coating on the hub here as well so to get a more like uh, even look the next topic is the uh, engine water cooling system and um, what I've done is you see you can still see it in the rear um, later there will be um, some piece some piece of plastic and this is not the finished version but a very good friend of mine is very deep into um, into 3d printing and we are um, yeah, playing with different designs so this um, might be the rear section later on um, yeah, again, there, there is still a lot of work to do here, but um, yeah, we are, we are experimenting here with styles and air inlets and whatever. So 
the main water cooler for the engine is sitting in the rear. It has a huge fan and um, fan is, is some kind of uh, my favorite topic or at least a very interesting one um, because an electric fan is obviously not uh, comparable to another electric fan and usually what I do is I do a lot of research um, because you can get in each size uh, this for example is a 60 by 60 millimeter fan um, you can get about 30 different uh, styles and, and power levels, RPM and whatever. And usually what I do is um, I do a lot of research and try to find the strongest fan available. So that means, for example, this 80 millimeter fan in the rear is the strongest 12 volt um, fan available. And that it has tremendous amount of, of power. So. There's the 80 millimeter water cooler. I made those, um, yeah, it's still a bit too colorful, but I made these adapter pieces to connect to the small piping I'm using. This is the first plate which goes in here. Everything here is, is made of carbon fiber. So all side panels, um, everything to mount electronics. So this um, panel is sitting over there. It has uh, the, the uh, starter knob. This is for, for the glow plug system, but um, yeah, back to the cooling system. So this will be the water tank and there will be another water tank. Um, I need to find another, another solution for this, but there is another um, plexiglass um, water tank uh, um, made from clear plastic, which will sit a little bit higher and this will um, take care of all air bubbles and everything. So the the water pump um, in, inside the engine will get fed from, from down here, so it will just get um, bubble-free um, coolant. And um, yeah, in this, in this tube um, I will be able to, to see and monitor the water flow. And um, yeah, this will be mounted in this area roughly. So and then we do have this fancy little box and we do have this um, uh, temperature sensor and what I need to do I'm not sure if you can see this on, on, on the camera later but let me power the system by the way the car the car uh, has two um, you see the first fan already running no you cannot see you can hear it so there's a switch in there I don't want my fingers to be cut off so um, so you see this, this thing lits up once I power the, the car. Um, this thing um, controls the whole um, uh, fan system. So there's this temperature sensor. It goes directly on the other side of the cylinder head. So I have direct uh, control about the cylinder head temperature at all times. So And finally, let's talk about the oil, oiling system. Um, you cannot see it from there, but um, I made a close-up shot. So in there, in the engine block, there is an oil nozzle. Um, the block has a, a small opening from the factory and I, drew, I just used the, this uh, machine window to install a single nozzle um, direct to the center of the crankshaft. This is the area where this control panel goes. So and behind the control panel you see a lot of electronics. Um, also, normally there, is, there sits this small Arduino Nano and uh, later on there will be a housing placed on top. So, but um, you see two dial knobs, there are uh, two relays underneath here. And what this system does is um, it controls two pumps. So there is a, a high pressure pump and there is this uh, yeah, suction vacuum pump or whatever you want to call this. And, um, the pressure pump, which is just uh, yeah, connected in a small loop because there's still oil in there and uh, I already made a huge mess uh, yesterday, but don't tell my wife. And um, yeah, this system is controlled with this microcontroller and once you plug this in or later on you switch it on, you hear the vacuum pump running all the time. So. There are two points on the oil pan I'm using. This is the high pressure pump. So there are two um, points where I uh, catch the, the oil 
and um, so that means this small um, evacuation pump or I leave me a comment what's the correct word for this um, just makes sure the crank, the crank case is always kind of empty of oil so there is not a, a, a huge oil level in there so this pump pumps into my oil, oil tank um, so this is a two style to separate um, air bubbles and to see what's going on so I switch it off so and from time to time so is uh, the program I, I, I made for this Arduino um, the evacuation pump runs all the time and uh, now it's programmed to like 15 seconds or whatever every 15 seconds um, the pressure pump comes on so this pump um, creates I, let me switch it off so this pump creates um, for this small size a huge pressure and it's sprayed directly on the crankcase and I'm pretty sure it's going to be splashed uh, everywhere from there later on um, I ordered a couple more uh, engines um, later on when I get my hands on, on a new set of, of, uh, of engine blocks um, I'm going to machine those blocks to, um, to take, um, to accept four individual nozzles and even a fifth one for the, for the cylinder head. So this system obviously can be, can be further extended and um, yeah, later on I'm going to spray um, with a very, very thin and, and um, perfectly directed um, yeah, screen, I'm going to uh, shoot directly on the, on the um, rod journals. You cannot only control um, both pumps individually um, regarding their, their on and off switching times. You see there are two dial knobs and I can... Wrong one? I can completely freely adjust both, um, both pumps when they are running. You see even the pressure pump. So and I think this will be perfect to make um, uh, later a perfect balance. Um, to make to make sure the, the uh, crank is all the time lubricated um, but there's not a lot of oil in there and the excessive oil which is going to um, get passed by the um, by the piston rings um, will all also be catched in this tank and um, of course it's going to get mixed up o over time so um, this oil is just uh, yeah, I need to get an oil change, uh, I don't know, every hour or every two hour or whatever. I just need to see uh, how this turns out. Okay, so far so good. I think these are the, the main topics. Um, obviously, there is a lot of more stuff going on behind the scenes. And uh, I cannot keep pace uh, with filming um, regarding my ideas um, for this engine. So I'm, I'm planning a lot of stuff and... Um, yeah, you, you see you see stuff and parts lying around here, but um, yeah, we will get to this topic later on uh, once we dive deeper in the in the cylinder head um, modification. I'm in the process of building a CNC program. By the way, you might hear my seven month year old son. Uh, he's going to take a bath right now. Um, yeah, so. The, Again, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, um, but I don't want to show anything until it's really finished and perfectly working. So, um, yeah, if you're interested, um, yeah, keep on watching, consider subscribing. And um, for those of you um, who are waiting um, to, for me to drive this thing, um, trust me, I'm the most impatient pe uh, person on earth. So I want to drive this thing so badly, but... Um, yeah, the only thing I just ne I need to do is electricity wiring. So um, you cannot see and look behind the table. Um, this thing will be packed with cables, connections, and and uh, control panels. And this is what uh, I'm going to do for I think at least for two days now. And uh, even this is is not finally done. Only you see a couple of cables, but all of this needs to be uh, yeah perfectly shielded and. A lot of work, but uh, yeah, it's hobby, it's fun. So again, to all of you, thank you for your interest. Thank you for watching. Please leave a, a, a comment. I'm always happy to see your comments, to, to answer questions. 
and um, I'm even uh, getting a lot of emails. Um, sorry to all of you who haven't got any answer from me. So I'm, I'm, I'm so busy and, and uh, kind of overloaded with work. Um, yeah, but I give my best. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.